Shalom Aki. I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh, so the world innovably calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world innovably calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside them. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit. Shalom to the elect, whom the most I've given is to hear. The title of this going of this lesson is going to be a reply to the to the guy uh Canadian prepper and um the, the this video called when the internet goes down all right and um he makes a lot of good points you know he's kind of like uh you know just going over the aftermath of what could happen and what most likely will happen as we're in a time of war of um the uh, North Stream pipelines one and two, and the damage that it could really do, all right, to the nation of Europe, and then also to the nation. I mean, also to America. He was going into the different implications as far as gas going up. Um, you know, people starving because if there's no gas, how can the trucks get to the um? You know, grocery stores to bring food. You know, and for a little bit, guys, they do have best belief inflation is going to go up, and then winter is coming, so you got to use gas to heat your house. You know, so you know it's going to be very devastating. The elderly, the ill, the sick, well, they most likely going to die off first. The young, the children, the babies. All right, but um. Just the title alone got me in the fact that when the internet goes out, that's going to be um, a hell of a, um ordeal in itself. All right. And as you see, I got queued up this comment by Flaming Pie Herman. I can tell you that living in Tampa the last few days, our internet are going down. Our ability even to receive or send out a phone calls or text messages or see what's on the news really impeded me psychologically. Even just having no electric for three days felt like an eternity. Right? Because for those who don't know, right, what's this? Today is October 3rd, 2022. And just a few days ago, Hurricane Ian hit Tampa, the Florida, you know, over there in uh, Tampa, Florida, and in that region, very hard. It even made its way over to Cuba, you know, which they was already in a hell of, you know, hell of a situation, not in an even worse situation, you know. But I would say over here in America, you know, it's hard because these people, you know, and I find myself, I can't lie, I find myself being guilty of it sometimes, just always on the phone. You know, can't go two seconds without just, you know, enjoying nature, have, putting your head up, just always in the phone. You know, and to not know what's going on, not being able to call a relative to see how they doing, look at the news, you know. And if, you know, if you see pictures, it was flooded so bad that cars, it's not like you can get in your car and, you know, turn on the radio and then get some info from there. It was all lights out. Even just having no electric for three days felt like an eternity. There's a different mentality on the ground when everyone doesn't know what's going on outside of a community. You see? And I'm guessing obviously they have some type of internet now because, you know, this person wrote the, um, you know, comment. This person wrote this comment. All right. But guys like Canadian Prepper. Um, Dabu Seven was it Lisa Haven? Um, Full Spectrum Survival, uh, Mike Adams, different guys like that. You know they are. I say they needed. You know they're they're needed and helpful as well. You know, as far as uh, you know, bringing counsel, bringing counsel to the people and to help. You know, uh, what's going on? To help to 
just bring out what's going on because it's so much news. You know, it's hard for one person to to to, to uh, cover it all. You know, and then through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, we come in and you know close down a stadium, so to speak, because we bring scriptures to, you know, scriptures to the uh, to the mix. And the scriptures say, right? This is Proverbs chapter. Eleven verse fourteen, where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You see, and you know, even though they don't go into scriptures, all right, that's our lot. Can't blame them for that. But they tell you, you know, they give you good worldly advice as far as you know, stocking up on food and. You know, getting this gadget or getting that gadget, you know, because it's still, nonetheless, it's still wisdom, you know, and um, with this, at least the people can have a little peace of mind. You know, the people can get a peace of mind, um, other, uh. You know, it's always good to go to the comment board. Like other comments, people were saying, you know, they appreciate. Like this one, Rare Bree. I want to personally thank you, Canadian Prepper, for having this channel and taking the time to be a voice to whomever will listen. Thank you. You always got a naysayer, <laughs> you know, and even us, when you go on our comment board, you have people saying, you know, you know, the water, thank you, bless you uh, for bringing out these, these, these words, you know, and this is why the devil, this is what the devil don't want. You know, he wants the people to be in panic to where when he brings his chaotic, um, when he, uh, introduces his wacky plan to the world, they'll have no choice but to go with it. All right? And I'm, I'm going to play a little bit because he goes into this too. Um, let me see. I'll start at two minutes, probably skip to four minutes. I mean, play it to four minutes and then jump to eight minutes. Structure. And any time you have an attack of this magnitude, I mean, the, the magnitude of this attack, you need to understand... I think it's something like 30% of Europe's gas is going to flow, would have flowed through Nord Stream. 30%. Imagine 30% of people in Europe not eating and just the repercussions of industry because Europe, of course, had some industry which the rest of the world relied on. Not only the gas, obviously, and that's just, I mean, it's really more like 40%, but there still are a couple other pipelines through Ukraine but those will likely be shut off as this war is now destined to accelerate and as Russia mobilizes to take over the entire country. It's just be, going to become a, a killing floor, unfortunately, for a, the military-industrial complex. Um, guys, as these attacks on critical infrastructure increase, the price of everything goes up because that's what we use to make everything with. All the stuff... Okay, the price of gasoline, oil, it's about to blow again. It's about to pop. We had a little bit of relief with the whole strategic oil reserve. <laughs> That's over. They're, they're saying that they're going to stop taking drawing from that reserve. Watch what happens. I am almost 100% guaranteed that they're going to start taking more oil from that strategic oil reserve. And when that starts to get low, people are going to get squirrely. What's going to happen is we're going to see cyber attacks. The internet's going to go down. There's a good chance that this will just stop. It's going to stop one day. Uh, there's going to be a denial of service attack. People are going to start targeting satellites. There's going to be, you know, some uh, servers corrupted. Something is going to go on. Uh, okay, with the web domains or something crazy is going to happen. And uh, when that happens, there's just going to be no more internet. You think the fog of war is thick now? Just wait till you have no information. 
<laughs> for some people, that's probably a good thing. Let's face it. But uh, all jokes aside. Yeah. Like the comment that we had read about the one guy saying he's a pessimist. He's not a pessimist. He's a realist. You know? It's going to get bad out here, man. And, you know, the people that's just, you know, is afraid of bad news or these Christians, they're not ready. They, they're not ready for what's to come. You know? They're not ready for what's to come, man. Because what's to come is, as the scriptures tell us, it's going to be a time that was never before seen on the earth. Right? Like it says right here. Now, I have it in the King James up top. But I want to read it down here in the Good News Translation. All right? So it says, But these are the signs. The time will come when all people on earth will be in the grip of great confusion. The way of truth will be hidden and no faith will be left in the land. Okay? No faith will be left in the land because nobody took heed for the most part. Nobody took heed to the spirit of prophecy to Yahweh. So they just see what's in front of them. They don't see what's in store. All right? Yahweh, the angels, us having spiritual powers. The Lord said his servants shall eat. A lot of people is not going to see that. Okay? It's not for them to see. The Most High wants them to uh, believe in his system. As the scriptures say, warn to them that go to Egypt for help and, I, and, not have asked, and have not asked at my hand. So they're going to trust in the system. All right? They're going to trust in the image. Same thing. The image of the beast. And then they're going to take the MOTB. Then they're going to be destroyed. And no faith will be left in the land. Wickedness will increase until it has become worse than you have ever known it to be. And when you look in the news, that is definitely the case. All right? STDs, rape cases, of all levels is going up. You know? Um, breaking and entering. People actually putting their youth to death on live. Okay? And uh, uh, being proud about it. All these things are happening real time. The country that you now see ruling the world will lie in ruins with no inhabitant or travel there. Slaki. The country that you now see ruling the world will lie in ruins with no inhabitant or travel there. Okay? When you watch movies like The Road, um, The Book of Eli, um, well, some of these movies are post-apocalyptic, but the scriptures already tell us what's going to happen after the nuclear missiles. There's not going to be no one here. So really, you could flip that on to before the nuclear missiles. Okay? The world is going to be in ruin. America, which rules the world, is going to be in ruin. After that, you know, in, um, I was talking about the portions in those movies where you know, you walking just on a desolate highway. The scriptures even say that. You know, you should be lucky to see like another man in the field. You know, the, some is going to go to concentration camps. Some shipped off to war. Others dead through the pestilence. After that, if God most high lets you live long enough, you will see that country in confusion. The sun will suddenly start shining at night and the moon in the daytime. Blood will drip from trees. Stone will, stones will speak. Nations will be a confusion. The movement of stars will be changed. A king unwanted by anyone will begin to rule. Alright, let me jump to verse 8. The earth will break open in many places and begin spouting out flames. Wild animals will leave the fields and the forests. At the month, and at the monthly periods, women will bear monsters. Fresh Water will become salty. Friends everywhere will attack one another. Then understanding will disappear. And reason will go into hiding. Alright. So let me. um Jump over to the 8 minute mark. Done. Kaput. That means freeze to death. This winter. 100%. 
So this means they have to dial down industry, dial everything down a lot in order to conserve and basically ensure that people don't starve and freeze to death this winter. But next year, okay, Nord Stream ain't flowing anymore. And there's a good chance that the other pipelines flowing through Ukraine, they're going to stop when that war flares up too. And that means all of the gas flowing through Europe, with the exception of the Turkish pipeline, is done, kaput. That means next year is going to be hell. Can you imagine the, the panic that is going to ensue? They're going to have to try to make it up, make up for the loss in liquefied natural gas in this Israeli pipeline that is probably doomed to fail because there's just it's in a, a potential hot zone. Uh, it's nowhere near enough to meet all the needs of Europe. I mean, it's a drop in the bucket. It's, it's a joke, to be brutally honest. It's not going to do anything. It's, it, may, it might help them survive, but it's not going to help them thrive. And uh, the problem is, guys, is when you start seeing these critical infrastructure attacks heat up, you're going to start to be putting people in a situation where they're going to have to do anything, even if that means complying with orders that they otherwise might not comply with. And this is when you get into war economy rationing. This is when it gets freaky and dystopian. Because and Let me just add too, when you go to do that, it's not going to work out for you, especially you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You see, according to Deuteronomy 28, the scriptures say that we shall be oppressed evermore. And nothing you will do, will attempt to do in the flesh, will help you out of your time of trouble. The times of coming are known as Jacob's trouble. Alright? But the scriptures say those that follow Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai will be saved out of it, the elect. Okay, so don't, don't, um, <laughs> you know, don't think that whatever you do in these times in the flesh, you know, which, of course, it's a, there's a, uh, there's a balance, you know, we say, you know, you could, uh, you know, get some extra food or, you know, uh, stack up on candles and so on and so forth, but at the end of the day, if your judgment is to die by the sword, if your judgment is to die by the famine, if your, if your judgment is to be eaten by wild beasts, that's what's going to happen. That's why, hey, the scriptures say, those that hearken unto the Lord shall be saved from evil. All right? Not to, you know, these other guys who don't bring out scriptures, but those that hearken unto the Lord. That's the most important thing. Now, let me knock this, you know, let me knock this off. It says fresh water will become salty. Friends everywhere will attack one another. Their understanding will disappear and reason will go into hiding. All right. And when you go into the second Ezra, the 16th chapter, it tells you why friends will attack one another because of the lack of bread. And they will not be found and they will not be found, even though many may look for them everywhere on earth. Wickedness and violence will increase. One country will ask a neighbor country if justice or anyone who does right has come that way, but the answer will always be no. At that time, people will hope for much, but will get nothing. They will work hard, but never succeed at anything. These are the signs of the end that I am permitted to show you. Okay dystopian because you're gonna have a situation where like imagine if the lights go out in canada in the middle of winter that's on the one hand really oh there's another one tuesday you keep you're keeping me sane buddy i'm seeing the same things and if it wasn't for this channel i might be seeking therapy Bad. But it also gives the government a bit of leverage to say, hey, if you want heat, you need to do what we tell you. OK, so there is a possibility that that will be used 
for control purposes, to keep people in line. And this rationing may well, and these attacks on critical infrastructure, and I'm not saying that, I'm not, you know, getting tinfoily on you guys and saying that they're doing this on purpose. I'm just saying that there's going to probably be retaliation. Never trust thy enemy, for as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. You have enemies, Israel. You have enemies. You know, and, you know, I said I was going to play it through, but we must bring our precepts because this is important for your soul. Okay? For that Nord Stream, that's a, not something you just let slide. Think about it. And I don't think it's going to be like some ham fisted, you know, sloppy retaliation. I think it's going to be a calculated thing. Uh, if the Russians didn't do that to themselves, and I know, you guys know, I try to look at all sides of the story. If they haven't done it, then that means we're going to get something back. And when we get something back, that means we're going to send something back their way. And it's going to escalate just like that. Now, hopefully, it stays on the level of cyber and it stays on the level of you know, just the targeting of, of critical infrastructure. But you need to understand that's a massive declaration of war. That's worse than killing a thousand tanks, a $10 billion pipeline. That's worse than us killing probably hundreds of thousands of their people because it's not just the money, it's what it can do, right? So this is why 2023 is likely going to be hell. People don't realize it yet. Uh, what you can buy for a dollar today is probably going to cost you $2, which I know you can't buy much with a dollar nowadays. Uh, it's probably going to cost you $2 in a couple of years' time. It's just a reality. The, the whole energy infrastructure could really just start to collapse from this point in if, we, if this is the, the route we're going to take with world war. And so, like I'm saying, it's not going to be uh, the bombs start dropping, you know, all of a sudden, DEFCON 1, and there's nuclear explosions at the missile silos, and maybe even a major city. It's not just going to jump right to that. Before we see that, we will see cyber attacks. We will see attacks on critical infrastructure. The price of everything goes through the roof. Government declares martial law. We go into war mode. They say, if you want to eat and if you want heat, then you got to get on your feet. It's a bad rhyme. Um, I don't know. If you guys can think of something else, let me know. Hi, I'm Lauren, and this is Lincoln, and we are the Austin Flipsters. We All right, so that's pretty much it, man. I'm going to leave it there. Second Ezra's 14 and 14. Put earthly cares away from you, throw down your human burdens, and lay aside your weak human nature. Put all your anxieties aside. It's like it. Let me start at verse 13. So set your house in order, warn your people, comfort those who are humble, and teach those who are wise. Then say goodbye to this mortal life. Put earthly cares away from you. Throw down your human burdens and lay aside your weak nature. Put all your anxieties aside and get ready to leave this world quickly. You have seen many evil things already, but far worse things are about to happen. We're entering into World War Three. Prior to that, this devil is going to um, introduce a plan for everybody to be karagmud. You know, and then that's going to lead way or that's going to segue to the very end of the end when those nuclear missiles shall be shut off. But we know that's not to happen prior to the MOTB being forced throughout all four corners of the earth. All right. So with that, Shalom to the elect.